So the plant I'm gonna show you today is actually not a species, but it's one of my favorite hybrids. This is Gasterallo uh, green ice right here. So this is the one, it's, it's companion planted. So it's planted with a glomerata and also this kind of Haworthia as well, um, this Haworthia hybrid. But this is the one that we're gonna concentrate on today. And you could see that it just has these really thick leaves and it kind of has this light green edging, kind of this, uh, this serrations along the edge. It's just like a really, really beautiful, hardy, thick plant. So I think the parentage of this um, is this uh, Ghana Alo with a Gasteria hybrid. And I'm not quite sure what the hybrid of the Gasteria is. So it's like a hybrid of a hybrid and another species. So um, that's when you usually said, that's why I went like this. They usually have an X in the front if it shows that it's, um, uh, interspecies, intergenus, <laughs> an intergenus hybrid. That was like kind of complicated to get around. But anyway, you can see that I have this in this little container and I have a little bit more of a rocky mixture here. And believe it or not, I actually have this growing a bit away from my southwest facing window, but still pointing towards my southwest facing window on a heating unit. So I usually don't, I'm not a big proponent of people keeping their plants on a heating unit in the winter months, but it has not seemed to get affected. And it's probably because my heating unit is schlocky. It's not good. <laughs> I live in an old apartment and they just like put in a new heating unit. It just like kind of like spits out a little um, um, heat. And so it doesn't seem to warm up the plant so much, but I do have to be a little bit more mindful because if it is warming the soil up a little bit, then it's drying it out a little bit. But luckily these plants don't need to be watered very much in the winter months. Um, and actually they're not really heavy fertilizer feeders either. So if you could go with like a more succulent fertilizer, like a 247 or a 347 um, and doing it on a monthly or even a bi-monthly basis, that's gonna be perfect. You could see that this already had flowered. So I can't show you what the flowers used to look like, but um, it sends out these flower stems right here. Uh, you could cut this back if you don't like the look of it, you could just kind of cut it back. And unlike, you know, agaves, these could reflower over and over again, whereas like an agave plant flowers once and then it's kaput. Um, but uh, another way that you could actually propagate these, I don't know what the seeds would look like, you see, because there's so many different hybrids. I actually don't know if you'd get the same looking plant from seeds, you probably wouldn't. But you could see I have some offsets that are right here. So that would be one of the ways that this, you could actually propagate this, I think is through the, through the offsets. And I've had this plant now for probably a good two and a half, three years, and I'd probably get a few more um, and, and plant them in conta um, container plantings like this because I think they make a really nice centerpiece. And uh, no pest pressures whatsoever. Um, just be mindful when you're not over, don't overwater this. You know, again, it has these really thick leaves, doesn't need to be watered all that often. Um, but watering it a little bit more in the summer months when you're giving it a little bit more intense light. And, um, and I find these to be really resilient in full sun all the way from being pulled back into a little bit more like bright indirect light conditions. <laughs>